This is Chicho. As always, welcome to my channel. Now, what I'd like to do is um, I'll tell you a little story about uh, how I ended up getting my first job as a geophysicist. Okay. Um, as, I, as I mentioned before, I, I worked as a geophysicist in the previous video, or one of the previous videos. Uh, you know, I share some of the stories that, I've, uh, that I have uh, regarding being a geophysicist and some of the experiences that I had. And, what being a geophysicist sort of entails, right? Uh, but I really didn't, uh, actually I didn't <laughs> tell you guys in that video how I ended up getting my first job as a geophysicist, right? And uh, I'd like to share that with you because it was, uh, you know, with, with certain moments in your life, uh, they only, um, you only realize how important they were in retrospect. And this was an extremely important moment uh, sort of that set me on the path to become a geophysicist and um, I only realized it much much later right uh, at the time it was important to me because I was looking to get this job but I didn't realize how important it was going to be um, in molding who I am and, and sort of directing me down this path right um, so let me set the set the stage for you okay um, when I was in university I was in a and a co-op program. If I can recommend, if you're going to go down the university, college, whatever higher education uh, or more education that you want to get, uh, if you can for sure enroll in a co-op program because co-op program, uh, they sort of you get education and then you know you get some schooling and then uh, you go into the work a work workforce and you do jobs, right? You work in the fields that you're interested in or in the fields that you accidentally find yourself in, right? Um, and I was in my second year university, second co-op term, my second work term, basically. Uh, my first work term, I had uh, worked as, uh, um, worked in construction, sort of uh, building roads, um, walls, concrete, there was a lot of concrete and building roads and stuff like this, uh, sort of testing stuff and writing reports and just, you know, putting on a white hat, uh, as if that means anything, and just being there right um, and I've been around construction all my life so it wasn't really something that I was interested in pursuing um, as far as long term went right so my second work term um, second co-op term um, basically what happens if um, I should give you the, the background on how this works basically you go to school for a while and then um, every work term and it switches up between what year you're in and whatever not right what what stream you're in but every four months or so companies basically uh, place ads looking for people uh, to hire looking for students to hire and the reason they do this is because um, by working uh, by getting employees by getting students to work for your company either through college or university or whatnot even high school I think has this certain high schools anyway uh, the government subsidizes subsidizes um, subsidizes some of that work, right? So when a company hires a student, they don't take on the burden uh, of the full salary that they're going to give or the for full hourly wage that they're going to give the student, right? The government takes on it. I think it's half the half the cost of that, right? So uh, you know the company gets a bonus because they get someone to work work for them. Uh, at half the, half the price of hiring someone straight out. Uh, the student gets something amazing because they get work experience, which is, in general, <laughs> way more important than school experience. In general, they go, to, they go hand in hand, right? I don't want to trash school, but work is huge, right? And the government uh, gets a benefit because uh, students are being trained to go into the workforce and the economy grows and so on and so forth and so forth, right? Uh, so it's beneficial to everybody. Um, so I was in my second work term, second co-op work term, and I looked up all the all the job postings. And because I was in the geophysics program, earth science, I was specifically looking to do geophysics. I didn't want to go into geotechnical or anything like this. Or uh, well, I didn't. I really wanted to focus on geophysics, right? And as you can tell, um, or guess anyway. There aren't that many geophysics jobs around, right? Um, there aren't too many people studying, and there aren't too many jobs offered. Um, 
so there was there was a handful of geophysics jobs. I think there was like five or six of them or so. Uh, so I applied to all of them. There was two sort of I was eyeing. One of them I didn't even get an interview. I didn't even get called in to get an interview. And uh, the other one I did get called in um, for an interview, right? And you know, during that time when you're in school, you don't know any better you. So you know, I dressed up in my interview gear, which would have been a suit or whatnot, <laughs> and went to the area where the employees were being linked up with the students that were applying for the jobs at the university. So you're sort of being herded into these areas and you're sitting in these rooms or cubicle areas and, uh, and you're being called in to go interview with uh, whoever's hiring, whoever's looking for someone to hire, right? Um, and for me, this interview that I went to, um, I, was in a, I was in a room waiting for, I think it was like either five, six, seven people uh, that were looking, uh, that were being interviewed interviewed for this job as well, right? Um, and I believe I was like either the second or third person, one of the early people <laughs> being interviewed. So I waited my turn, you know, they called me in and um, you know, I go into the room, I introduce myself, you know, shake hands, hi, this is, well, for you, be Chicho, this is Chicho, you know, hello, hello, grab a seat. And uh, at the time, uh, I didn't know what the company was, but um, basically, the person that was hiring, uh, that was interviewing me, he was the owner of the company, it was a very small company, there was only three people in that company. Uh, the second person, the second rank person, second highest level person, was the person that hired me after my graduation. Um, uh, in the previous geophysics video, the one, the person that I met um, in the parking lot, and uh, he ended up hiring me long term when I stayed with the company for 10 years, right? Um, so the owner of this company was interviewing me. And um, just a heads up, if you are in a co-op program or if you're looking to get a job, uh, just get your foot in the door and learn as much as you can. Um, if you can, find jobs with small companies because what happens is with a small company, um, you'll learn a lot more because you're responsible for a lot more, right? So you learn, you know, a lot of the bureaucracy involved in it, a lot of technical stuff involved in it, and you learn a lot of, you know, if the company's getting a lot of work, all of a sudden, you know, they throw you to the deep end of the water and tell you to swim. So you have to learn on your, you know, on your toes. You, you have to learn fast. So it's r amazing, really, really good experience working for a small company if you're starting off, right? So... You know, I sat down, we introduced ourselves, and um, he basically, you know, looked at my resume and said, uh, asked me, you know, everything was there regarding my education, who I was, you know, uh, my background, where I came from, what courses I'm taking, stuff like this. So after all the little minor initial stuff was done, um, this is the question that he asked me. Uh, it was either first or second question serious question that he asked me that really got me the job right and the question was this uh, he laid out a scene and said listen so you know you're hired I've trained you to do a certain job and I send you to the field and you take all the equipment and all you know whatnot and you're set up and you're about to do your work and uh, you go to turn on the instruments right uh, your geophysics instrument maybe these seismic mag radar EM gravity uh, going down boreholes, whatever they may be, um, and it doesn't turn on, it doesn't work, what are you going to do? That was the question. You're on the field, you're about to do a survey, or you're planning to do a survey, collect data, whatever it might be, and you go to use your equipment and they don't work, what are you going to do? Right? For me, um, you know, I've had a little bit of, I was in my second year, end of second year schooling, so I've had some uh, experience with some of these instruments, not all of them, not by a long shot, right? But I had some experience, and growing up in the 80s, uh, you know, I was into video games and stuff, so, you know, I had little handheld games that you played and whatnot, uh, so it was, you know, I've been exposed to some electronics, and um, without really thinking, my reply instantly was, I checked the batteries, 
<laughs> and uh, you know he had he had his a pen in his hand and he was looking at the sheet and looking at me and stuff like this and as soon as I said that I paused right he sort of went and there was a moment of silence right and I was sort of you know I was new I didn't know right and I was sort of like I wasn't sure if I replied correctly or not right uh, and the pause was extended so I went uh, is that okay you know I'll just check the batteries he goes yeah yeah no no that's fine that's fine and then just this minor pause and then he did a follow up question he goes he goes uh, what happens if the batteries are all fine right everything's in, in the right order again almost instantly I probably said I don't know I check the connections <laughs> I check the cables Right, unplug everything, we plug them back in. Just like a stereo, right? Again, there was a pause. And I was like, you know, this guy pauses a lot, right? And then he turned to me and said, uh, listen, just want to let you know uh, you're hired. And I went, what? And he goes, you're hired, because that's, those are the answers I was looking for, right? I sort of went, what do you mean, right? So I started asking him a question, well, what do you mean, that's it? And he goes, listen, we're a small company. And he, he told me about this. He goes, he goes, we're a small company, or my company is a small company. It was his company, right? And if I train you for something and I send you to the field, and if things aren't working, I don't want you to call me, you know, for every little problem, right? I don't have time to deal with it, right? He wanted basically problem solved, someone who's going to, deal with any problems that come up as best of his ability and after he's tried everything and if nothing works then he puts a call into the office right because if i'm out in the field and things aren't working uh, it'd be ridiculous for me to call back call the office right away and have them walk me through what i need to do to check to make sure everything's happening it's like calling computer support right first thing I ever do when, when I call any software, computer, what kind of electronic or cable or cables not working, whatever it is, whenever someone comes on the line, the first thing I do, I've already turned on and off the computer, I've checked the connections, I've set the reset button, you know, I do all that, right? There's a reason why I'm calling it, and that's, the re that's, that's what he wanted. He wanted there to be a legitimate reason to call into the office, right? And after... You know, an interview, and, and basically told me, look, you might be having other interviews. If they do offer you the job, uh, don't accept. I'll, you know, he told me I'll get the paperwork done up right away, and then you can accept, and you're hired. Uh, and he said, I, I have to interview the rest of the people here, but you're basically it. And I was physically fit, and I could carry the equipment, and you know, he had looked at my resume. He knew I was specializing in geophysics. Um, and he knew what I wanted to get into was there, all right? And just that simple reply, right? Check the batteries, right? Getting that job really set me on the path of who, you know, what I was going to do uh, for a number of years, number of years, right? And for me, after working for this company, working for this person, this three of us, four of us working together, me being, you know, the lowest level second year student running around doing things and learning different instruments and being sent out on my own at times, well, a lot of times actually. For the first month, no, but after that, going out and doing all the stuff. Uh, after doing that, I knew that's exactly what I wanted to do, and that's what, you know, the co op co-op program is really about right to give you experience if you find a field that you really want to be in you can pursue that right and then for the third year third co-op term you know when you know booklet was coming out and because it wasn't online at the time booklet would come out you read the stuff uh, the job postings and you apply and i knew i wanted to do more environment, environmental geophysics and geophysics specifically um but there were no geophysics job that really caught my eye for the third 
work term that I had. You know, you go to school for four months or eight months and you do another work term. So we were supposed to do, um, to qualify to graduate with the co-op program that I was in, you had to do minimum of four work terms and you could have done five, you were offered five. So I had done two. For my third work term, um, I didn't find any jobs uh, that I was interested in. So what I ended up doing, and after working for this company for three, four months basically, I realized what type of education I needed to get to be able to pursue this, right? So in my third work term, I knew um, there wasn't any jobs that I really wanted to get into. Um, and I knew I needed to learn a little bit more mathematics. And the co-op program basically works like this. When you go out and work, um, at the end of the work term, you sort of write a report and you submit it to your university. You get a letter from your employer saying, you know, this person, you know, did everything they, they were required to do and they pass, right? Uh, and, you know, you, you get a little check mark. You fulfill your requirement to do a co-op work term and you can proceed to the next level. Um, so for my third work term, I couldn't find any jobs that I wanted to do. And I was lucky enough to have a family member at the university where uh, I could use to say I was working for. Um, because after working and doing the geophysics, I realized I needed more mathematics uh, and I wanted more mathematics knowledge. Um, so instead of, uh, well, <laughs> so what I ended up doing was uh, basically telling the university that I was working for this family member and um, we made it a confidential work term so I didn't have to submit a report right because you could work for someone and they could say it was a confidential work so they didn't want this information shared um, with the with the school right so we made it confidential and you know I did some work uh, work and you know he sent a letter in um, saying that I might fulfill my requirements and what I ended up doing was taking four math courses that term uh, so I could get my math minor and hands down as far as my academic career goes um, and doing a work term at the same time confidential work term uh, that term of taking four math courses was hands down the hardest academic uh, term I have ever had okay and I shared part of that in the first video we put out for uh, the language of mathematics where I said I you know one course I had to study for was you know I studied 10 days straight for one of the tests I was writing right uh, extremely difficult extremely difficult um, so th that's what I ended up doing um, and I knew I wanted to do geophysics uh, for my fourth work term, I did the same thing. I looked into the job postings and there was nothing resembling what I had done uh, previously in my second term and I wasn't interested in doing other types of jobs. I knew exactly what I wanted to get into. Um, so I was lucky enough to be uh, have people <laughs> the west coast of BC that were in construction, family members, and uh, I was hired to do another a confidential work term, work reports, and uh, uh, and fulfill my requirements for my four, you know, cooperative terms. Um, and it was the second one that really got me uh, into the geophysics field, got me doing what I, you know, did for about 10 years, and some of the experiences that I had that I shared in the previous video, uh, just talking about geophysics and some of the places I went to, and some of the things I experienced anyway, right? So in retrospect, right? At the time, it was important because it gave me the job, my reply to the question, what would you do if your instruments didn't work? Like check the batteries, check the connections, right? That got me the job, but in retrospect, it set me on a path, sort of uh, had a huge part to play of who I am, right? What I've learned, the experiences that I've had, right? So very important um, experience.
experience goes a long way and I was lucky, right? Uh, it wasn't a question I was expecting, right? You read, you know, you try to prep yourself for an interview. You think about all the things they're going to ask you, you know, what are your hobbies? Why, you, why do you want to work for my company? Uh, and what not, right? Who are you? What experience you've had or anything like this? What would you do in the field if your instruments didn't work? If you're going to go into geophysics, very important to know. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Huge, huge part to play uh, in my life, right? And if you're going for job interviews and if there's a job that you want, um, in retrospect, you'll find out how important those moments are. Okay. Um, and I'll share one more, one more little bit with you. It's, uh, um, and for me, I share some of these stories with some of my students, and some of my students sometimes share stories back at me, uh, back with me, right? Um, one of the stories that I shared uh, with you guys before was the ten by ten math puzzle game, right? And one of my students showed me a game. I think I was showing him games, and we were interacting, and you know, he was playing a game while, you know, we we're having math sessions, just a steady math session. I asked him what it was and stuff like this, right? And I take some of the stories that my students tell me to heart and I use them, right? And one story that uh, one of my students told me was uh, regarding um, um, his, uh, the student's father's partner. The student's father and uh, his friend had a company and the partner was in charge of hiring and firing people and stuff like this. And it was a medium-sized company, so they hired people on different levels. Right, you know, it could have been high-ranking someone they needed, technical uh, engineer, whatever it was. I can't remember what the company was, or mid-level or low-level. Right, maybe they needed a pencil pusher, someone mail delivery. Right, and um, my student, the girl, told me that her dad's partner had told her that the first question, the first question that he asks of anyone he's interviewing for, irrelevant of what position, what level they're on. Right, which blew me away. I've never heard this before. Right, uh, basically, she said the first question that he asks everyone, he turns to them, looks at them, and says, "What's an eighth? Right. What's an eighth? Crazy, right?" And she said, "If they hesitate, you know." Within reason, there might be a pause to think, but if they hesitate and they say they don't know, uh, he doesn't hire them, irrelevant of what position it may be, right? It's because they don't know what an eighth is, right? Mathematics, very powerful, very important. Right? What's an eighth? What do you do if your instruments don't work? Check the batteries, <laughs> check the connections sets you on a path to become a geophysicist. For the job interview you might be going for, right? What's an eighth? I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.